Okay, so here we have a garden solar powered rope light, or at least it used to be. Um, I've cut the solar panel off and the controller because they're absolute garbage. Um, I've tried different brands and types of garden lights over and over again over the last few years and they all fail, they're absolute garbage. They, they're so cheaply made, the solar panel normally starts leaking and the switch normally fails first and then the battery gets all covered in corrosion from the leaking. They always break, and that's if they work at all, um, as they need to have a decent sunny day before it charges up enough to last overnight. This did, when it was brand brand new in summer, work absolutely fine for a few months, and then uh, as it got towards winter, they just don't charge up enough, and it starts flashing instead of being able to light up properly. And then, let's say, after maybe a year, they end up dying. So I've got three sets of these, and I want to carry on using them, but without crappy solar power, as uh, it never lasts. So what we're gonna do, I've got these tiny uh, DC, DC, DC DC converters. Allegedly, they're rated for three amps. I wouldn't trust it with three amps, but I don't think I don't think these are going to take much. They're going to be maybe a few hundred milliamps at most, so these should be absolutely fine. So what we're going to do is hook this up to the bench power supply and find out what the actual power drawer is. Right, hooked up to the bench supply. These are not labelled. There's no polarity marking, so I'm just going to guess. Got it floating a bit. I don't need a ground reference to be honest. Um, I don't know what voltage will start. We'll try it. Say two. Oh, hang on. There we go. Right. So we're at two point four, and then we see it just starts glowing. Two point six, three point zero. Oh. And then it seems to max its brightness at, actually, I, I don't think that's going too high. That's about three and a half volts. Let's try at three volts. Okay, so that's uh, dead on three, well, was dead on three volts, 232 milliamps, so well within spec for our little tiny converters. Um, and you can't really see because it's quite well illuminated here, but that's pretty good. That's going to be sufficient for lining up in the garden. Um, I don't know what its safe maximum is, but I think 3 volts is going to be about right. It probably goes to about 3.2, well, I would have thought. Um, but I think that's fine. So, yeah, that's a very low draw. Um, so, what I need to do, I need to get one of these presets. Got the smallest part in the world, which obviously is going to fail at some point. Might worth trying to bypass that with a resistor. Not that's any single sided, so yeah, might be a bit hard to solder a resistor in there, such a small space. Anyway, let's get one of these cells. What we need to do, I'm going to be running this off basically my main 12 volt supply out in one of my outbuildings. So we'll hook it up to 12 volts and then we'll stick a load tester, such as that one, across the output and we'll get it set up for 3 volts exactly. And then we're going to glue that pot up so it doesn't move. Um, then what we need is some weatherproof enclosures to put these in. Um, the reason we're doing it this way is, so what we're going to do is going to feed 12 volts to all the places that want to have these ropes, and then we'll regulate it locally down to 3 volts. Uh, if we try to send 3 volts straight out from one of the outbuildings, uh, over, say, 20 metres of wire, we're going to have quite a significant voltage drop, and we won't end up with 3 volts at the lights. Uh, and also they're going to be various lengths depending on where they are in the garden so we'll get different brightnesses depending on where they are so we'll lo we'll locally regulate the power by sending 12 volts out and then uh, regulate down to three so i need a little tiny weatherproof enclosure with wire in wire out and it will basically just silicon seal it in to weatherproof it so uh next step is let's go design an enclosure right so i've just designed a very simple small box Infusion 360, so this has got 2mm walls, 2mm base, and 5mm uh, holes on either end. And then if we have a look here, we've done a matching lid, and it's basically, uh, I think it's 2.5mm offset, so it'll allow for tolerances. That will just basically be glued in place with uh, silicon to make it waterproof. And let's chuck it in the slicer. Right, so there we go, in the slicer. It's a 24 by 40 mil by 14 high, so it's gonna be a fairly quick print. I'm just doing it on the generic PCG, and it's gonna be a half hour print basically. 
So we'll send this draft. If, if the quality looks too crappy, I'll redo it at 0.2 instead of 0.3. But I think it's going to be fine for what we can use. Basically, it's just going to be a box we're going to silicon and seal one of these little uh, uh, DC converters into. So I'll send it to the printer, and uh, off we go. And there we go. In OctoPrint, we can see the first layer has been printed out right now. And we'll go and have a quick look at the printer. And then we'll see the first layer has been put down on the Prusa Mark 3S. And this is in uh, black PECG. And this is with a PEL powder coat base from uh, Triangle Labs. Nothing particularly exciting happening. We'll check back on it later. Right, I've got this little board hooked up with these uh, spring clips. It's hard to get it to stand up because it doesn't weigh anything. Uh, so we've got 12 volts going out, and then the load tester is set to draw 230 milliamps as I want to adjust it at a realistic load, as the voltage may go up or down based on the load. So as you can see, it's currently 5 volts, so I need to find the world's smallest uh, Phillips screwdriver. We'll get that adjusted, get it onto 3 volts, and what I'm going to do, uh, I'll probably crank up the power then and run it, say, a 1 amp or something, just for an hour or two to make sure it's not going to fail. And if it survives, then we can uh, start thinking about fitting it to an enclosure and soldering these uh, these wires onto it. Right, as you can see, I've managed to adjust it to pretty much dead on 3 volts, which is pretty good for that crappy little pot. Um, pulling 1, well, 1, 1 amp and 30 milliamps, because I forgot to adjust the uh, last part of it. Um, drawing 3 watts. So 12 volt, 309 milliamps going out and uh, it's then converting that into 3.1 watts of power on the output. Uh, let's run, leave it running like that, see how hot it gets, and make sure it's reliable and it doesn't start having problems like shutting down or fluctuating or burning out. And if it's good, we'll get it used. So uh, doing the math, looking at the input versus output current draw, looks like we're losing about half a watt. So we've got 3.1 watts on the output and we're losing half a watt on the board. Um, so it shouldn't get insanely hot. Let's see if we can get a reading on this. Hard to get it. When you're at close range like this, it's the uh, laser dot isn't actually where the uh, sensor is. But we're seeing... Uh, where we go? 52. That's on one of the chips. Okay, that's not insane. Let's try and, try and get to the back of the board. We get like 45 degrees. So 50 on the chip, 45. That's after a few minutes of running. It's not insanely hot. And this is, uh, well, four, pro probably about four times uh, the current I actually need to draw. So I think these are going to be absolutely fine. I certainly wouldn't want to put three amps through one of these. In fact, I might give that a try. So I think these allegedly go up to something insane like 48 volt input and two or three volt output. So we could run it at 48 in, two out, and uh, pull three amps and see how long till they set on fire. Um, but for this case, I don't want to set it on fire because I'm actually going to use it. But I'm happy so far with the performance, so I'm going to scale it back down and then run it long term at 230 milliamps, and then if that's good, we'll get it sealed into a box. Let's see what we can see. So the lid's done, and the box is not far off being done. I think the 0.3 is going to be good enough quality for what we're using it for. So we'll, uh, we'll pull that off when it's done, and we'll take a closer look. Right, so that's still load testing away, and our first box is done. Now, obviously the finish isn't great, because it's 0.3mm. It's the only place... There's a slight, yeah, a slight banding at the bottom for some reason. The top half's got a better finish. Uh, there's slight sagging over the top of the holes. Again, that doesn't matter. That is... It's PATG, so it's got a bit of flex with that. It's pretty solid. You can see the uh, powder coat PL finish on the bottom. That is pretty strong. Again, I imagine you can't. You can't even bend that. That's pretty good. So reasonable finish on the top. Very happy with that. It doesn't really matter. It's going out in the garden. And how does the fit go? 
so fits in easily and I was about half a mil left right back forward uh, I actually left half a mil clearance on purpose to make sure it fit properly but it seems that my print is pretty accurate and I could have got away with doing the measurements exact so I might trim that down a touch for the next two that I print but this one is perfectly usable once that is glued in place that isn't going to move around anyway um, so let's just check the fit so there you go pretty much exactly how I intended lift a little bit of room either side to allow for the folding of the wires as it goes down to the board and we'll fill up with silicon glue the lid shut and it'll be reasonably weatherproof P uh, PCG is pretty weatherproof so I imagine that'll last, probably outlast the LEDs or the uh, DC DC converters Right, this has been running for quite some time now, so let's see how things are going. Make some room. See if we can get a fix on the back of the board. We get about 33 degrees. And 33 on the front. So that's with it running at its actual current draw of 230 milliamps. So that's a nice, low, realistic uh, current draw. These things do not get... I mean, it's pretty warm in here right now. I mean, what's the table? 25. So it's like 10 C above ambient, or even less in some places. So it's no more than 10 C above ambient. Uh, that's going to work absolutely fine at this low current. Uh, I say again, I, I can't imagine it working at 3 amps, but let's try that out later on. Uh, so I can feed this through my first box, get it soldered in, and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. All right, so let's take a look outside. Basically, this has been used to outline the uh, treacherous path in the garden so I don't trip over at night. Ooh. Uh, a frog's come out to say hello. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's basically just how learning in the garden. It's actually brighter than it looked on the camera. I can see fine with these on. Um, and I'm basically using, in my hand I have a uh, remote control. So I've got a four channel Sonoff Pro to uh, control all the outside lighting. And then we've got a permanent uh, 12 volt feed uh, that goes to everything.